atmospheres. Gotta love them. I mean, seriously, you gotta. I mean, despite the fact that they are without argument the most vitally important component of a planetary body, at least one that aims to generate beings capable of observing other planetary bodies, I feel that they are underappreciated. Socrates would speak of fish learning to see water. Perhaps we should be better acquainted with the ocean in which we swim. And as I commence preparation for my end of 23 retrospective, I notice that several of the first astronomical stories of 2024 bear in some way on atmospheres. Given that I have a hole to fill in my schedule, I thought I'd get a head start on this year by listing some of the more idiosyncratic atmospheric phenomena recorded in the last few days. The biggest storm, if you will, has occurred at the edge of our solar system, with the sudden repainting of what had been our most beautiful planet. Everyone was relieved to see Voyager 2's image of Neptune in 1989. I know I was. With the anticlimactic blank canvas that was Uranus three years earlier, the swirling vortices and deep twilight colors of Neptune were a welcome reminder that our home system was still capable of beauty. Since then, our only views of the ice giants have been from telescopes either on or in orbit of Earth, and they have shown that the momentary snapshot provided by Voyager 2 was misleading. The atmospheres of Uranus and Neptune were in fact as protean and variable as our own. In 2006, Uranus, which before had proffered only abstract blandness, suddenly erupted into a symphony of storms and bands not dissimilar to Neptune. While in 2011, Neptune, after its storm danced and hopped around its surface, suddenly revealed a face almost as featureless as Uranus. This isn't really surprising. Both Uranus and Neptune have appreciable axial tilts, and so display seasonal variation. But in their cases, the seasons are years or even decades long, rather than months. And it was in an attempt to model this seasonal variation that a group of astronomers from the US and Europe ruined my childhood. By employing both the Hubble and the Very Large Telescope, the team were able to show that Neptune's features had been artificially distorted to enhance the various storms and bands on its surface. In reality, Neptune is as pasty and faded as Uranus. The team also showed that the appearance and disappearance of a polar hood, likely of frozen methane, is responsible for a slight shift in Uranus's color over the course of its long year. But who cares? They just uglified the universe. I can only hope they're wrong. Unlike the ice giants, Venus has never been much acquainted with seasons. Its axial tilt is just 2.6 degrees, so the amount of sunlight received by each hemisphere remains constant throughout its year. That said, it has been known for over a century that dark patches occasionally form in Venus's upper atmosphere, and in 2019, Astronomers found that over the course of 11 years, possibly in sync with the Sun's magnetic cycle, these patches increase and decrease, possibly, though not yet certainly, to a regular rhythm. Since these dark splotches absorb ultraviolet radiation from the Sun, they vary the amount of sunlight that reaches Venus's surface, and thus comprise the closest analog to a seasonal cycle our sister planet possesses. The problem was that no one had a clue what these absorbers could be. Speculation ranged from ferric chloride, to various forms of sulfur, to microorganisms. Nothing seemed to fit. But in January 2024, a study published in the journal Science claimed to have identified the elusive substance at last. Modeling the interactions of three substances known to exist in Venus's clouds, iron, water, and sulfuric acid, it found that, under certain pressures and temperatures, these will combine to form complex compounds, such as copiapite, rhomboclase, and anhydrous ferric sulfide, which, taken together, produce an effect similar to the absorption observed in Venus's clouds. I know it was unlikely that microorganisms existed in any abundance in Venus's atmosphere, but it's still a punch to see yet another glimpse of life disappear into the mist. And now, from atmospheres in our own system, to those in planets around other stars. In 2007, the Spitzer Infrared Space Telescope imaged the first ever map of the surface of an exoplanet. A hot Jupiter, 65 light years away, 
that orbits its star in a little over two days. The map showed a giant hot spot, similar to Jupiter's great red spot, on the planet's sun-facing side. Planets so close to their stars forever point just one face toward them. But offset slightly eastward of the subsolar point, presumably by encircling winds. For many years, this map had been the default conception of hot Jupiter as the galaxy over. But, like all images of exoplanets, it was a snapshot, an instant in time, that said nothing about how an exoplanet's surface could be affected by its weather. It was also at relatively low resolution, which concealed the roiling, seething reality underneath. WASP 121b, recently named Tylos, is an exception to the rule. It is a transiting exoplanet about twice the mass of Jupiter, orbiting a star 880 light years away in just 31 hours. Its sun facing side sees temperatures in excess of 3,000 kelvins, hotter than many stars. Surprisingly, it was nonetheless the first exoplanet found to possess water in its atmosphere. Unlike many other exoplanets, Tylos has been observed multiple times over the course of three years, and has produced data of relatively strong certainty. The team took the data from previous team's observations and processed it all identically to ensure an unbiased sample. The signal from the data was clear. Tylos' surface was varying with time. When the team modeled their results, the visions were extraordinary. Great cyclones forming and dissolving as they passed from the searing sun side to the frigid night side. Roiling waves of superheated clouds that leapt across its surface like gazelles. While this is still based on computer modeling rather than direct observation, it's a jolting glimpse of what our eyes may see when we at last catch a glimpse of these roasting hell worlds.